welcome to the Kentucky History Podcast, uh, being radio land here at uh, <laughs> Crab Orchard University uh, in the bowels of uh, Crab Orchard <laughs> with uh, Professor Jameson Cable and Pope here, partners in crime. Uh, we're doing our continual saga of a mystery historical figure here in Kentucky, and this is part two. We hope you enjoy it, and we also hope that you have a Merry Christmas, and we advise that you use the three-finger rule <laughs> when you're handling your uh, <laughs> bourbon glasses. <laughs> Ancient age is preferred, but whatever gets you through the night. <laughs> All right, Jameson, so good the, morning to you. The, the good morning, that's a pretty good introduction. I, I would say, though, if I had to be in the bowels of anything, it would be the bowels <laughs> of Crab Orchard. Yeah, why, why do they say that? Why don't they just say the halls or something, you know? I don't uh, know. It really is the bowels of here uh, yeah. on this winter day. <laughs> it is. It's gotten real cold, but we uh, are going to continue looking into Old Slick, our, yes. our mysterious historical figure from Kentucky. Uh, just a quick recap, he was born in the late 1860s so he's you know brush creek what brush creek whitley county yeah and uh he was attending college at the old college of barbville and mm-hmm. or union college in barbville yes. there um since our last podcast i went down and, and took a little uh detour through whitley county oh yeah oh yeah find anything neat oh yeah <laughs> i sure did it's really quite beautiful it is it is, it is. you know not yeah. nice which you know we we've talked about going to pine mountain many times mm-hmm. and we always go through Whitley and Knox and, and mm-hmm. those counties to get there, and it's always it's always refreshing. It is, it is nice. Nobody nice was guy. taking pot shots at us or anything this time. So, <laughs> That's you know, cool. It's always a positive. It, it's a positive. <laughs> no one's throwing up on the bus no ride. No one's day. throwing <laughs> up on the bus, which has happened before. Yeah. Oh gosh! I'll t- uh, I, I don't mean to interject, but I'll tell this quick story. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. We were on the way nope, down. We <laughs> we we're on the way down from Pine Mountain. And, of course, it's a windy road yes. down that mountain. Yes. And, of course, we always have trash bags and tell the kids, you know, yeah. hey, you know. This is a trip you're talking yes, about. Yes, a trip, trip. school trip. Yeah, yeah. yeah then, overnight. Uh, we uh, you know, say, if you feel like you're getting sick, just let us know. We'll get a bag to you and everything. Mm-hmm. And, of course, as we were on the way down, this boy he looks over to me. He's white as a ghost. Yeah. He says, Mr. Cable, I, I think I'm going to be sick. Yeah. And I say, okay, hold on. Just hold tight right there. We're going to get your bag. I'm saying, the bag, we need a bag back here. <laughs> and, you know, people pass the bag. Hand him the bag. He pours it open and pukes all over the back of the seat and misses the bag misses completely. Misses the bags completely. <laughs> yeah, he needs to improve his shooting a little bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but anyway. There you go. Well, that's really encouraging, Jameson. I'm glad you shared that with us. About <laughs> students puking and missing the bag. Yeah, that's great. Oh, okay. And by the way, we went to Pine Mountain Settlement School, which mm-hmm. is an environmental and history center. And great highly, place. Highly recommend. Go, it. go on your own. You don't have to go up to the school. Yeah, you can just, just go, go and just get go a cabin up there. up there. Get a cabin. Yep. Yeah. Hide out. So, uh, old Slick here. <laughs> the law won't be looking for you up there. They'll look everywhere. <laughs> After you get through Whitley County, you know, they, they give up. <laughs> it's too much uh, resistance. Uh, so after we, uh, so with old Slick here, he, he's been, to, um, he's been in, Knox, or in Knox County and went to Barbellville, and he's gone back and back home to teach and this and forth. But, you know, his college days aren't over. He leaves mm-hmm. Knox County again to go to the Agriculture and Mechanical College at Lexington. I tried to look up what exactly that college was, but I, I did not. I don't know yeah. for sure. He he kind of struggled with mm-hmm. his leaving. Of course, it was the first time he's going to be leaving his parents. He mm-hmm. referred to this as divorcing his parents mm-hmm. uh, and going mm-hmm. out on his own. His mom, you know, of course, didn't want him to leave, uh, especially going to Lexington. But she finally allowed him <laughs> to go. They'll kill you, boy. <laughs> They'll kill you up here. And you know, to <laughs> the context of this, you know, this would have been. Uh, probably 1880s, 1885. Oh, God. So he's, he's you know, not that old at all. No. <laughs> uh, but he was brave and noble and uh, more generous. I'm and, sure they met him and said, what rock did you crawl out from under? <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, his mother, he got his mother's blessing, and he, he, finally, he finally was able to leave. Uh, but he rode a stagecoach from Barberville wow. to um, Woodbine, which is in Whitley County, which I'm not really f- mm. familiar with that area or where Just that is Just up from exactly. Brush Creek. But, probably, yep. Well. Um, and he got on the L and N or down, <laughs> <laughs> probably down. He got on the L and N and hightailed it up to uh, the big, uh, big city of Lexington. It was the farthest uh, he'd ever um, been from home, of course, at this point. Um, but he, uh, he kind of really enjoyed 
his trip on the uh, talked about this trip on the train just seeing you know the bluegrass and just a different area probably the first time he'd been on it before no one it, threw him it off it was yeah yeah this was it definitely didn't throw the first me time. off this time mom yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> but he kind of envied the people who he who grew up in the area because of he kind whenever he came through he kind of like mm. really enjoyed the farmland the flatness and yes. you know we talk about not well i shouldn't say flatness hills yeah um he t- we talked about how mayo when he came probably to, seemed flat to him if he came yeah from like oh him. yeah flat yeah. as a flitter mom yeah he, he <laughs> you talk about um mayo who mm. kind of yes. when he came to yes. he kind of had this um i wouldn't say jealousy but you know he kind of was was oh he had a chip on his shoulder yeah yeah i don't mm. really feel like this with old, old slick here he was a bit more just like he really he's liked, cool man it. Like, yeah. he yeah. fits in <laughs> yeah yeah so um Upon meeting these new new kids, he kind of envied them. You know, they had school longer. He, whenever he was in school, you know, it wasn't as long of a time period. They had longer school, just different. Um, but while he was on the train, he noticed. Um, by, by the way, yeah, Slick is one of the most uh, probably admirable Kentuckians in history. Uh-huh. So we're we're following his story here. I uh, would just just kind of interject there, give you yeah, a few yeah. little clues. Yeah. Well, he he wrote this book. Yeah, there uh, you this go. It's an autobiography about his mm-hmm. life, and it's pretty informative. And I don't want to give away his name right. until no. later on because right. I don't want That's you to have the these no, misconceptions we right. until we'll, we'll. We don't want you to know the truth yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the truth of us all. He's riding a train. Yeah, he's on it. He's on a train. Stagecoach. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but he he had some interaction, like he saw um, the military, some military interaction while he was on this train, and he kind of pondered this question on how you know these these kids went to a military school that he had ran into, and uh-huh. uh, he kind of t- thought to himself, you know, that this military school was teaching them how to fight, and he kind of thought to himself, you know, wouldn't isn't the educational service supposed to be to teach you to love one another, not kill yeah. one another? Mm-hmm. And he had this kind of uh, epiphany, to say at least, yeah. and not to say it. That won't no. work in any future action. That's a Whitley County idea. <laughs> but he was like, oh, he's like, you know, he, he kind of mm. had a, you know, I don't, know, I don't know what you want to call it. You know, uh, I, I saw on Gunsmoke the other day, do you know that there's a bolt on stages, you know, that holds the wheel on? It's mm-hmm. a tap. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if you have a wrench when no one's looking, you take that bolt off. <laughs> when you go taking off, the wheel will come off. <laughs> and <laughs> the stage goes just to take a big left turn. And it'll throw or... everybody out. Of it. <laughs> 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 I don't know if he had an epiphany on that. Either. <laughs> no, but not yet, at least. Not yet. <laughs> Uh, but he met the president of this college, this this uh, mm-hmm. college in Lexington. Yeah. Now, I do need to look up to see what this college was more focused on. Uh, it may have been more of a military college. I don't know. Um, well, you know, here in Crab Orchard, we had a finishing school. Uh, well, what would that? What's a finishing school? Yeah, what's that? for for young ladies. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was a ladies' school to, uh-huh. to teach you how to you know set the table Apple properly and cook <laughs> etiquette. And, <laughs> etiquette. Yeah. Oh, okay. And from what I've seen, there's a lot of women that are finished around here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh Lord, well. don't laugh too loud. But it's true. It was a finishing school. Yes, they're, yes. Fi- they're finished all right. So he gets to the school, but and he still has the goal of becoming a lawyer, and, and instead of sort of taking up his family trade of a farmer, and we talked about earlier how his farmer, his, his farmer, his dad wanted him to be a lawyer, and so forth. That's kind of his goal mm-hmm. for one of his kids. There you go. Um, college had college was hard though for him. This kind of college, you know, I guess it was a way uh, he wanted to be the best student. Um, he finished with high marks. Uh, he traveled back home and uh, taught school uh, for about five months. Until <laughs> he <laughs> found <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And, and then he came, He uh, then uh, went back. Uh, How do you teach, teach school for five months? I, mean, I don't know. Is well, it the I mean, length of the school year? At, at that time, that would have been probably wise, the length. It? it wouldn't be that long. Because they had to let him out to hoe tobacco mm-hmm. and stuff like, like that. Farm and land yeah. and all those yeah. Feed the cows things. and pigs. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. But he kind of he was kind of was getting a good staple, staple mm-hmm. though, of... Um, uh, being a p- very fair and light teacher in the area, mm-hmm. uh, which will go to things that come down the road. You know, in those days, you you got your your board too mm-hmm. as a teacher, so you went and lived with the students. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> that was, was your pay. You know. Can you what imagine? You, oh, that? No, I cannot <laughs> yeah. imagine. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna send you to three months with Johnny over here. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa. Yeah. Uh, what about Out another on one? Come on. <laughs> yeah. But in June of 1890, he was appointed. Uh, a cadet of the U.S. Military Academy at West Point. Wow! So, career, so he got into it. He, yes, he got his his career took off, and he rather, wow. and, and he had to go 
to New York, mm-hmm. of course, and he left Kentucky. And yeah. this was the big big thing about his, and he kind of saw this as his way of becoming a lawyer, you know, going mm-hmm. up there. And, and, military. Yeah. And being, being in the military, that would help him get a stable footing on his uh, future plans. But right. it's funny. Our he, president now believes in using the military, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> easy now easy. Yeah. holding the bible upside down too <laughs> but anyway go anyway, ahead anyway. I'm sorry no, it's okay. It's okay. his mom wanted we don't him. want our political biases to come out <laughs> he, his just mom, a statement of truth his mom did want him to go to West Point even though it was farther away than, than um Lexington, by far, she was okay with him. Like she was really yeah. encouraging to go. That the more far. she sees that, yeah. that's all right, son. Just keep going. You want? You sure you don't want to go to Paris, France? Yeah. So he would only get to visit though, uh, once uh, once a year for four years. Yeah. Which I mean, wow, that that is a lot. That's a lot. Uh, or not yeah. a lot, I not guess, lot. to visit. No. But you think about the travel to New York mm. from you know, Whitley County, right? You know, you have to get on multiple trains. <laughs> yeah. Those trains yeah. aren't going to be fast. Yeah. Um, and then on top of staying Swim in school. a couple of creeks. Yes, yes. Um, but his father was okay with it, too, because he was really about him becoming a, a, a lawyer. And saw they supported this would him, be, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, saw this would be a good a good, uh, good opportunity. And he really supported a military academy that produced Sherman, uh, Lee, Grant, and Sheridan. He, yeah, I, mm-hmm. I don't he was know. a Union general Union during general, the Civil okay. War. Sheridan. I, I'm he not was a, he's a big one. Mm-hmm. Oh, so on his way to... Um, to West Point, they stopped in Washington, mm-hmm. and he was able to listen to a speech. Oh, boy. Uh, and he never told who this person was, but a speech that was given, he was listening to it and um, really kind of took in the, the public speaking of it. And He'd been in several competitions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he'd uh, been in debate, co- debate competitions, competitions when he was yeah. younger, and he Debated. really enjoyed, I guess, this you know, mm-hmm. man speaking publicly about mm-hmm. his opinion or whatever. Uh, but he arrived at West Point, um, and he had heard about hazing and how... Um, it was kind of a prominent thing for the new kids to get hazed, and he had to admit, though, that he, you know, he had I've to go been hazed down in Whitley County for some time. <laughs> been in a haze, <laughs> but he had to go through. You know, all the new people had to go through physical and mental test. Mm-hmm. And after the two days of the test were completed, they would then uh, get um, the, get the results of, the, of if they're in or not. Um, he was admitted to West Point, and he was order to report to duty. So he got in after right. those uh, those few tests. But now, get on to the hazing. He, there was a summer camp they had to do, and this mm-hmm. was when the hazing comes into. And they called them plebs. Like the new new people were called mm-hmm. plebs. You know, I, mm-hmm. I would kind of, you know, we kind of called you know, new kids toeheads. Or, right. Uh, I don't, not green thumbs. Plebs or plebs? Ple- plebs, yeah, mm-hmm. maybe. Um, it's a Roman. But he did it's not. It's the lowest class. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Look at there. It's a low-class Roman soldier, I think. There you go. Um, they're, they're the common people. The common people. Well, huh. The most common. So he was Did anyone ever take college? You say, you're nothing but a plebe or something like <laughs> that? Just take a swing ones. at it. Oh, yeah. That's Rockcastle <laughs> County fighting words. Don't take much. Like, good morning. Take a swing at it. Oh, pop your jaw now. <laughs> that's it. That's the way they do things down in Rockcastle. <laughs> But he was resentful for the hazing. He he and a few others were like, we're not taking any of this hazing. Mm-hmm. And of course, that made, brutal. Them, that made them I mean, the target. You know, uh, those people the died target. from hazing. Yeah, that made them the target of the, of the hazing. Oh, yeah. And they were forced to <laughs> listen to this and not <laughs> take this out. This is one of the hazing things. Oh, I know. They were forced to feed each other molasses with a spoon while blindfolded. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was one of the hazing. Oh, God. <laughs> You shouldn't complain about that. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's when I was thinking of the hazing. That's, you know, that's just a regular meal down in Whitley County. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking more of how they would... Um, Your mama. You know, like tie them up and like beat them with a, oh, I a soap too. and a soap and a sock hose. or something. Yeah, absolutely. And I was like, well, that's not crazy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I wouldn't want to do it, but um, they had to lay down and act like they were swimming oh, God. on the floor. I have checked. <laughs> and when the other upper this class is cruel and unusual punishment. thought they had swam far enough, they told them to stop. Wow. I mean, I, I, you know, yeah, hazing is not, not a good thing no. by any means. But to me, <laughs> this was not this no. terrible, obscene no. hazing that he was having no. to, that they would have to go through. But uh, he, was, he was a sentry on duty. And uh, this is this outside. That's all stop the hazing Stop or I'll story. shoot. <laughs> and, well, he was a sentry. Or shall shoot if you stop. <laughs> <laughs> He was a sentry on duty. I get and, confused. And I'm they, from Whitley County. There was somebody approaching. <laughs> yeah. And he, halt. you know, halt, give me the password, give me yeah. the code. And, you know, they yeah. have to have a code. Uh, you know, here at West Point, they have to have a code. Yeah. 
And the person couldn't think of the code and had far- forgotten the code, and he arrested them. Yep. But guess who this was? Probably the dean of the, the college. It was his superior officer. There you go. Well, good. It shows he's doing his job. <laughs> yeah. And his reputation actually grew from this. So he was the guy who re- yeah, absolutely. Uh, arrested you the, follow the rules, superior man. officer. The military. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't go. You do not get a, a break here. No. Um, but after he became an upperclassman, um, he was he you know, was able to confront this topic of hazing and kind of put it down. You know, no more eating molasses. and Swimming on the no, floor. No more swimming on the floor. No. Um, but his eyesight, this is one of the, his eyesight started to fail him. Oh, like his eyes started to get, get bad vision, yeah. and he was, re- he was forced to return home and leave West Point. He did Aww. not get to graduate from West Point, and uh, he, he had to stay home. <laughs> Shooting the wrong person. <laughs> That's why. He's probably in the field of artillery. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's moving out there. Okay. Let her go, boys. <laughs> Blast just away. A just a sheep. <laughs> Half a bl- t- platoon out there. Yeah, <laughs> his own platoon. <laughs> uh, but anyway, he had to rec- return. Well, the guy that felt so good about him, you know, that he got <laughs> <laughs> uh, bragged on him. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. can't see. <laughs> Push my hand. Do uh, you have the code? <laughs> yeah, tell me the code again. Uh, I'm over here, Johnny. But anyway, two years two years of rest and recovery, he had to kind of take off mm-hmm. and so forth. Um, so it took him a, you know, a little bit of time, right. um, and he had to... Um, After he went back to Whitley County, he probably said, i got to get out of here. I can <laughs> see you just <laughs> fine. <laughs> back see cows and sheep. <laughs> uh, and they're all jumping over the fence. So he then, though, does want to continue. And I think earlier I spoke about four years being at West Point. Those four years wasn't at West Point. Yeah. That was, you know, for two years he was at West Point, and then he ended up uh, going to North Indiana Normal school, which was in which was mm-hmm. at Valparaiso, which mm-hmm. I assume that you know this is a complete assumption here right. that, that eventually came the school of Valparaiso, but wow. I don't know. I Good don't basketball. Know. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what I knew from. Oh, it must be basketball school. But anyway, he studied law there. He um, was able to join a debate club, and he really began his interest in politics at this point. Mm-hmm. And he really got into it, and was he was elected to uh, the president of the Southern Literary, Literary Society. And um, during That's this time, that's interesting. And it's Northern Illinois. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's that is it's Southern, Southern Literary, Literary Society. Society. Yeah, yes. <laughs> I bet they had few members. <laughs> <laughs> but he met Laura Rollins there, Ooh. and this was what he described as the happiest year of oh, his yeah. life. Oh yeah. He bethro- was it, how do you say it? Beth- bethro- bethrald- bethrald- her. Bethrald Laura Rollins, <laughs> and. Um, they got she, enthralled. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she was also from Kentucky as well. So it was a it was a, oh, a wow. Kentucky hmm. brothel brothel. No, 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 it wasn't a brothel. I brothel. don't think it's a brothel. <laughs> uh, but they, he, were, they were bethralled. <laughs> but he stayed in he the stayed, brothel. <laughs> he stayed in Valparaiso for the summer yeah. uh, for law school. But found <laughs> out that the superintendents of his school district back home was now going to go up uh, for election. Oh. And because of the new Kentucky Constitution, which was recently elect, passed. Yeah, he yeah. had to elect the superintendent. Yeah, so he went home immediately to register as a candidate for the Republican ticket Wow! for I'm the impressed. superintendent of uh, his, uh, his uh, of Whitley, mm-hmm. uh, well, it might have been Knox County, I think. Or, yeah. Um, but anyway, there's two candidates. James Faulkner, mm-hmm. president of Union College, and Reverend Frank Hopkins. Ooh. That was his competitors. I uh, don't know if those names ring a bell to you, but that's who they were. Wow. Uh, but he wasn't prepared for a political race at all. He had uh, made a lot of friends, you know, teaching in the field mm-hmm. uh, and so forth. Um, but it didn't really, he didn't really have a lot of family help. You know, he's, it wasn't like a well-known family that right. had influence and so forth. So he hadn't been uh, a permanent resident uh, for three years, and he was only 24, so he's mm. a pretty young dude. Um, but anyway, that's that. He goes back back home. I'm running anyway <laughs> for, for his first political campaign. Well, now, what family he did have, of course, helped him out. His cousins right. helped him. You know, said, "Hey, you know, oh, oh slick guy, he's my cousin. You yeah. vote for him." Yeah. Um, his boyish appearance didn't help because he was a young cat. He Probably was immature. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, honestly, 24. He was I was really pretty immature. immature yeah, I was too. <laughs> I still am. <laughs> But he went. Uh, he went to the least progressive part of town, there you or go. the county. Yeah. Took three weeks Brush and conveyed Creek. the area. Yeah, mm-hmm. three weeks there, and uh, related to their poverty. Yeah, yes. said, "Hey, oh, you yeah. guys, you know, I've been here, I'll man. help you. I'll help you." The homeliest man north of the equator <laughs> had called huh. to see him while he was out there. So he went to um, 
he went to this uh, to this man house and he talked to him. This man and called him boy and kid and mm-hmm. you know kind of put him down as far as that kind of stuff. But mm-hmm. as he went, he was able to oratate. Yes. If you want to use that word, yeah. speak yeah. and uh, clear enough to convince this guy over man. to uh, to vote for him, and he just kind of yeah. you know, look here, uh, support him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it's funny how when he was doing this, he would go around to people's houses, and, you know, in the middle of the mountains in the woods, you know, on horseback. I'm a around. male. <laughs> and well, he would if like the if the if the um, if it was just the wife at home, mm-hmm. like he he would talk to. All them. they got is but like then, horse trails up there. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, they don't he, have. But he would leave four lane highways or anything. Yeah, yeah and say hey. You know, call, call me back whenever you, your husband's here, like you know, and, and so forth. And then, at some, like he got called back by this guy, and he went and talked to him and kind of explained his thought and uh, won him over that way. So good for him. That was good. Yeah, uh, but he's on his way up, man. Yeah. So so, and I, I'm a little like the way he told the story. And this might be just for the times. To me, it sounded like for each precinct, like they would be counting the votes as they came in. Like it wouldn't be a mm. big. Because people would take weeks to vote, you know. It's yeah. like you wanted to vote for, you know, what whoever, and you were a mountain away. It would take a long time to get there. Mm-hmm. You couldn't just so. But as they counted votes, they were still able to uh, kind of campaign. Not to say he was campaigning, you know, right while people, hey, vote for me, vote for me, that kind of stuff. But you know, uh, as they went, that the the votes were getting counted. And before they got to Barberville, Barbersville, one of his opponents had dropped out completely. Uh, and you know, Barbersville would be the biggest biggest mm-hmm. uh, set of votes in Knox County there, um, and surprisingly enough, Knox County had been a majority Republican, but the Democratic superintendent uh, had been there for twenty five years. The county took took on the motto that the best man for the job who should get it, and they didn't look at party. So you know, mm-hmm. at the time they were. Well, very, I wish we'd do that today. Yeah, that'd be nice. Hey, um, uh, but anyway, he. Uh, but we don't want to inject him. <laughs> <We> don't <laughs> want <to> Whoa! <laughs> um, but he had arranged multiple date of debates with some with his opponent, which was so he'd won his primary. And as I was saying, you know, uh, Knox County was primarily a majority Republican county, mm-hmm. but had a, had a, a Democratic Democrat superintendent for yeah for yeah. like twenty five years. So he received his opponent. The Democrat was John T. Hayes. Um, don't know if that name rings a bell. Maybe uh, probably not. But he arranged multiple debates with Hayes, and it helped him out a lot. Uh, because Hayes wasn't a good speaker. Mm-hmm. And as we've said, Old Slick here had really honed polished in, that polished up. his speaking mm-hmm. abilities up, and he was able to push topics that you know Hayes didn't support. Mm-hmm. And this kind of put Hayes in a bad spot. Mm-hmm. Uh, that year, uh, President Cleveland was elected, and uh, uh, the Democrats dragged dead... <laughs> the Democrats there dragged a dead raccoon through the streets of Barberville to celebrate. Wow. <laughs> uh, they said the whole country had gone uh, Democrat, basically, except Ohio. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, for three places. Um, Ohio, Hale, and Knox County were the three places that didn't go Democrat. Uh, the day before the election, Hayes had influenced county officials and they and uh, didn't have his name on the ballot, mm. kid, which is very, you know... It's a problem. That's a problem, yeah. Uh, so his friends and others uh, rallied to him and, and against the county, because, you know, obviously that's not right, uh, to allow him to be a ride-in. Mm-hmm. And they that was eventually allowed, and they won their argument, and citizens were able to write in Slick's name. Mm-hmm. Uh, both Democrats and Republicans were very upset at Hayes' tactics, and that pretty much helped O. Slick win the win his first uh, political campaign. And uh, he was now the uh, superintendent of Knox County Schools. Uh, his term started in like 1894, uh, even though he was elected in 1893. So you know what he did? Returned to college wow. <laughs> and, and finished his law degree. And he graduated from, um, he graduated uh, that, that year and then returned to Barberville. He entered uh, the bar of the Knox County Circuit Court. Mm. So, you know, it's interesting just how different it was as far mm-hmm. as like you know, graduating school, mm-hmm. going to school, how, I mean, you could do that now too. I guess if I ran for a, a political office, I could still go mm-hmm. and finish college even if I wasn't graduated, but you think about the distance and the time mm-hmm. that that would have involved, but he did it, so so it wow. worked out pretty good. That's great. He, he, here, here's a comment he had on teaching, and this is, this is just relative to us and any teachers out there that are listening. The work of a teacher seems to be, seems to me, to come nearer being divinely noble than any other work performed by one human being for another. Yes. Take a, a young, pliable intellect 
uninformed and unaroused and breathe into it the desire to know, train it for intellectual contest of life, inspire it with lofty motives, prepare it for great duties and great responsibilities is almost a divine calling and on the shoulders of him who commissions those who teach the responsibilities are all the greater. Yeah. Pretty good little, pretty pretty good little good. comment. Pretty good. From, um, from Brush Creek. <laughs> um, but he is also referring to him being the superintendent. And so mm-hmm. so on January, though, 1896, he actually becomes or actually gets married to uh, uh, Miss Rowland. So mm-hmm. that happens. But his wife had perfectly good health up until this point. Oh. But she became ill oh, with Lord. Uh, cerebral spinal meningitis. Oh, God. Which is not good. That's not good. And she died in 1896. So basically uh, four months, or July to Jan- January to July. So about five, six months, wow. seven months. Um, and that happened quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know, I mean, I'm not a medical doctor, but that would, of course, be a terrible thing to happen, especially right after you've you been right. married. And he talks about kind of how this kind of, you know, destroyed him, of course. Yeah. Uh, starting a new position, losing his wife, and he, I mean, he was very much in love with her. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, uh, though, but in order to kind of... He was betrothed at a brothel. <laughs> yeah. So in order to, though, kind of put that by him, he focuses on his work, mm-hmm. uh, studies law, yep. and his, his job as superintendent. Uh, he never married again. Yeah. yeah. So. You know, so, so many people, I mean, some people... Mm-hmm. You know, they turn a tragedy into focusing and doing mm-hmm. something good, you know, yeah. rather than just wasting away. Yeah, yeah, and that's kind of the <clears throat> the pendulum you have when, mm-hmm. in the midst of a tragedy. Yeah, we yeah. all have them. Uh, go, you know, let, <laughs> let it define you and kind that's of sulk right. or you know, right. pick it up and yeah. go on. Or I, I spent a good time sulking. <laughs> <laughs> Years sulking. <laughs> Ain't over sulking yet. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, his superintendent duties goes pretty well. He, he runs for re-election in 1897, and he has a successful first term. Um, he had con- commended some of the old, uh, condemned some of the old bu- school buildings. If you can imagine, you know, some of these buildings. Mm-hmm. I mean, Kentucky, for, the, for, for a long time, did not put anything into education probably right. at we all. We talked about that. Yeah, you know, yeah, and it just wasn't a podcast. So you got these buildings that have you know, one room, one window doors that are just overrun and you know probably grown up mm-hmm. that are, aren't taken care of and he actually went around condemned them built new buildings i uh, got new furniture you know mm-hmm. really really invested in education mm-hmm. um he also fired teachers for you know immoral behavior mm-hmm. don't know what that could have been but uh <laughs> He redrawn the district lines. Probably voted Democratic. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, he, he doing these things, you know, did make people upset, um, mm-hmm. and some of his supporters kind of waned against him. But he still mm-hmm. was able to re- win the Republican nomination um, in the general election. He faced off against Lee Pope. Any relation? Probably. Probably. I mean, we're getting over there to east, close to East Tennessee, mm-hmm. right? We had some Lee Popes in our family. It's a oh, family okay. name. Oh wow! Mm-hmm. There you go. Um, he decided to take some law classes in Center, Center College, and you know, just kind of, you know, I guess increasing his his mm-hmm. uh, knowledge. He did have uh, some classes under J. Proctor Knott, which is a future mm-hmm. governor or would be a future governor. Mm-hmm. Knott County. Yep. He continued working though as the as the uh, superintendent of, <laughs> of Knox County, and um, uh, the education system was uh, pretty good. I mean, it was going going well. That's good. I'm going to tell you one last time. Quit feeding them hogs and get in school. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway. <laughs> Junior. We gotta, we, we, we're getting to this point here in our story. or We're getting to this point here in our story where we kind of got to open it up to Kentucky mm-hmm. and the Kentucky problem. Mm-hmm. Um, going back a little bit, yeah, my grandfather was a, was a school teacher mm-hmm. uh, in East Tennessee mm-hmm. and uh, in a one-room schoolhouse. And... He raised a lot of cane, too, and one night, one of his students, high school students, when he was coming, riding his horse down the trail, yeah. you know, from uh, bushwhacked him, jumped up and shot him oh, and man. hit him right in the head, and he had a scar across his forehead for the rest wow. of his life. Wow. And he jumped off his horse and was bleeding profusely yeah. and wrestled the guy to the ground and took the gun, and the guy took off running, and my my grandpa said he was a crack shot, you know, uh-huh. and he said, I lowered that gun and put my finger on the trigger, but he said, I just couldn't kill him. And he said, 
the guy was so ashamed he left the country oh. in you know the area of Tennessee yeah. and never they never saw him again yeah, wow. and said 20 years later that he got a letter from him and said that I want you to, I want to thank you for not killing me on that night I was wrong and he said I want you to know that I've improved my life and I'm now president of Bank of America <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Oh, that is that is a uh, yeah. wild, wild uh, man. <laughs> that night, it could have could end it, man. Yeah. Could have ended it right there. <laughs> Probably should have. The choices, the choices we make. <laughs> yep, that's right. <laughs> so, with the Slick's journey, we're going to step outside of Slick's Slick's area, yeah. and we're going to look at the broader picture because oh, that'll be all, interesting. All this, all this kind of goes. That'll in. be interesting. <clears throat> and we're, we're going to we try to look at the broad picture as we go uh, along. Oh, definitely, history, definitely. You know. And this, you know, we've talked about this. I wish I was from Brush Creek. <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, this, uh, uh, this issue or a slate just fits into this puzzle and all this. Mm-hmm. And, and this might shine some light to some people on maybe who Slick is, and mm-hmm. and you could probably research it a little bit easier and find out. Um, but we're going to talk about the Kentucky problem. This, which one? This, yeah, yeah, which one? The problem. But if you think about 1895, mm-hmm. this is when all this is happening. Uh, his wife, uh, Slick's wife, died in 1896. So that's kind of the, the point of Slick's life we've got to. Mm-hmm. Sounds exciting. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty right. cool. That's it. All right. uh, thanks for listening. If you yeah. want to find us, Twitter and Facebook at KW History Pod. We also have an Instagram at Kentucky History Podcast. Um, and then uh, check out, we post, we're now posting these on YouTube as well, so you can listen to them on YouTube at, you, at Kentucky History Channel. Yeah, or you can go down to Brush Creek and look for us. <laughs> yeah, 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 look for us. Just make sure you, make sure you don't spook us. Yeah. <laughs> All, right, All right, that's it. Thanks. All right.